works. Perfect. Um, so Keith and I, as well as a third person who's not here, are the three primary contributors to the Seed Center project, which we're going to share a little bit about this morning. So what's a Seed Center? What the heck is a Seed Center? Um, <clears throat> I, I was the principal creator of the project early on, and knowingly or not, Seed Center in some ways is a f reflection of my personality or my experiences. And so just to rattle a few of these off, Seed Center is DIY. Um, it's discrete, so it's a do-it-yourself device that you can build from off-the-shelf electronic components that are generally available through the internet. Um, it's ex inexpensive, so the, the inspiration for Seed Center was another do-it-yourself signing device called the Spectre DIY, and being a cheapskate, I wanted to see if I could make a cheaper version of that. So that was uh, part of the ideation. It's air-gapped. I am a um, little bit about my background. I'm a retired police officer. I was a cop for 15 years. I don't say that to make me the most popular person in the room, but the majority of my time was spent uh, doing digital forensics. So I have, in some ways, a, a deep technology, a, a deep uh, knowledge of adversarial computing and information artifacts and what's stored and stuff. So one thing about traditional hardware wallets that always makes me uncomfortable or made me uncomfortable was plugging the device in via USB. Because if you're more technical or you have a background in uh, forensics or infosec, you understand that a lot of things can happen without you knowing automatically when you attach one device to another device. So that aspect of conventional hardware wallets made me uncomfortable. And when I discovered this way to communicate using QR codes between um, the device that's connected to the internet and the device that is connected <clears throat> and working with your private keys, it was a very elegant solution to me. So the air gap QR code exchange is something that was really important to me, stateless, also kind of evident from my law enforcement career. Um, uh, if somebody gets your hardware wallet, there are some access control mechanisms in play, but during my time in law enforcement, I saw many, many, quote, secure mobile phones made by big companies like Apple and Samsung and other manufacturers that were allegedly very secure become compromised with government-created tools or government-contractor-created tools. So while I think that the access control mechanisms and a lot of the hardware wallets are legit, when the incentives become big enough, I think there are going, exploits are going to be discovered. That's just going to happen. Security is a cat and mouse game. So my solution to that was, what if the device that was handling your private keys, when you powered it off, the keys weren't there? So then you have a separate copy of your private keys that is just one copy, and it's very clear to you that that is what you need to protect, whether it's in a safe deposit box or a safe or hidden somewhere or wherever. But um, seats aren't being stateless. When you power the device off, the keys aren't there, so it makes it very clear what you need to protect and what's important. Um, I'm a maxi. I like to, like Keith, I like to think of myself as a non-toxic maxi or a little more soft-spoken maxi, but... Seed Center is Bitcoin only, and that's a big part of our ethos. And then free and open source is just, um, uh, we're building this device in service to the Bitcoin community. And for people out there who are maybe looking for a different solution or they're open to other solutions, um, it's an option that the beauty part is they don't have to, have to interact with us. Like I said before, it's off the shelf parts. So you don't have to interact with us. You don't have to buy anything from us. You don't have to communicate with us. You can just go to our GitHub repo download the software, find out the parts you need to build, build it yourself, and we don't need to be involved. Um, but what does Seed Center do? It does everything a hardware wallet does. The three major things that it does are it helps you create secure private keys, then you generate the public versions of those keys that you need to set up a wallet, and it, you can also, of course, use it to securely sign transactions. Just a note about the first part, um, creating secure private keys, we are a bring your own entropy solution. So when you power the device on, because it's stateless, because it doesn't remember your private keys, you have to introduce your private key to the device. And with Seed Center, you either have to bring a key that you've created with another device, or if you're going to use the Seed Center to create a key, you have to bring some sort of randomness from the world around you, whether that's in dice rolls or taking a picture. Uh, we'll talk more about that. Or just doing a BIP lottery where you choose seed words out of a hat. But I emphasize that because it's very important you're not trusting a hardware wallet to give you a private key. It's important to create that yourself from real world inputs around you. It's, it's a very secure way to create private keys. But like it says at the bottom, it's basically a hardware wallet that you can build yourself. That's an important part of our ethos. So what makes it unique? As I've talked about it, um, 
Seed Center operates in isolation, so there's no Wi-Fi, there's no Bluetooth, there's no other means of wireless communication, and the USB port that you use to power the Seed Center is actually wired for, um, it's wired for power only. That, that USB port doesn't even carry data physically. So Seed Center is this very naturally isolated environment where you can create and work with private keys without worrying about them leaking to the internet or another computing device. Statelessness I've already touched on, but one of the advantages of statelessness is that it allows you not to just manage one key, but you can manage multiple keys, which in turn lets you manage either multiple wallets, or in the context of a multi-sig, you can manage multiple cosigners within a single, uh, single multi-sig setup. There are some trade-offs involved with that. You can also mix seed signer with other harder wallets. Um, that's perfectly possible and acceptable. But with the stateless aspect, um, another unique characteristic of that is if you have um, a mother or a father or a cousin or a good friend who wants to set up their first Bitcoin wallet, you can use your seed signer to help them get set up as well. And maybe eventually they acquire their own or they get a different harder wallet. But um, with, between trusted parties, I wouldn't just treat it like a, a, a bank pen on a string or loan it to a stranger. But with people that are in your life that you have a trust relationship with, it's absolutely solid value proposition to be able to share your seed center with them. Uh, again, at the, last, <laughs> at the bottom of a cheapskate, you can build one for still for less than $50, which is pretty comparable or less than a lot of harder wallets that are already out there. What do you need to build one? The green board on the left is kind of the key ingredient of Seed Signer. It's a very specific version of the Raspberry Pi. And you use either a version, uh, the preferred version is a Raspberry Pi Zero version 1.3 that doesn't have that Wi-Fi or Bluetooth um, hardware even built into the board. So it's naturally not able to communicate wirelessly. The board on the right is just a simple screen and controls. We use a very specific model for that by a company called Waveshare. They're generally ubiquitously available on Amazon or you can get them on AliExpress or a variety of other online retailers. Bottom left is just a simple Raspberry Pi camera. And we have a memory card, USB cable, and if you so choose, we have a, a variety of 3D printed enclosures that you can use to hold all of the things together. Uh, so what do you need to build one? I just told you, but if uh, you'd like the details on the specs, it's all at our marquee website, seedcenter.com. It's in our GitHub repo. And because I believe the benefits of Seed Center extend beyond just being able to build it yourself, some people choose to purchase it from someone else who's already gone through the trouble of pulling the parts together, and maybe sells it with a nice enclosure for you to either put together yourself or already assembled. There are trade-offs associated with that, but for some people, that's a totally valid way to get their hands on a seed signer. And I'm gonna pass it off to Keith, who's going to do the, uh, the stressful live demo portion. That was, that was awesome. <clears throat> we, we're, we're trying to pack a lot into this demo, so we're, we're like racing and staring at the clock here. All right, so I have set up, this is Spectre Desktop Wallet. I've set up a demo multi-sig. We're on my local reg test, so we're not spending real Bitcoin, although I, I was tempted to. Uh, so here's my seed signer. And so the first thing we gotta do, we have to load a seed. So again, we don't have time to explain all the details, but this is my seed. So I'm showing this on a live stream. If there was real money on this, I'm now broke. And then because of the lighting, I gotta find the right spot where I can scan this uh, without having bad reflections in the way. So give me a sec. There we go. All right, that worked well. Just hurdle number one has been cleared. So the seed is now on board on the seed signer. So I can go into my wallet. I wanna send some Bitcoin. I've got a transaction already waiting for signatures. So we're gonna send 0.001 test Bitcoin to this address. It's already got one signature, it needs the second one. And Spectre Desktop knows that I've set this up with a seed signer, so it knows to communicate via QR codes. So that's the proposed transaction. But Spectre Desktop does not have my secret. It cannot sign this transaction on its own. Only my seed signer uh, with the secret on board can sign it. So now, this is the hard part, the next hurdle. All right, so 
I want to scan a PSBT. All right, fire up the camera. And then this animated QR has a bunch of data in it, so we need to catch a couple frames worth. And then I'm battling uh, obstructions and whatnot. Oh, we're getting there. Whoo, second hurdle has been cleared. We're killing this. <laughs> All right, let me make this bigger. So we spent a lot of time on the UI to make sure that we show you all the important details of a transaction. So this is showing the basic structure of your Bitcoin transaction that's being proposed here. One input is going to flow to your recipient, some sats are going to the mining fee, and then you're expecting to change back. So we want to make sure that you are aware of where every single sat is going in this transaction. That much Bitcoin is coming in, the recipient gets that much, minus the fee, and then really important, this is the change that we're expecting to get back. So just like any transaction, this is the easy part. Confirm that the recipient is the right address and the right amount. And then the change. So we have the option here to verify that this change address really is controlled by our multisig. Um, but for expediency, we're not going to go through that step. Um, also, that would be a hurdle that I don't think would work with this lighting anyway. So we're going to skip that, but we can verify your change address. So we're happy with the, what we see. We approve the transaction. And so this QR code is the signature that your private key produced. But again, it's all air-gapped. So I'm just plugged into a battery. There's no Wi-Fi on board. This never connected to the computer, OK? But I still need to get the signature back into my computer that's connected to the internet. So I'm going to pull up Spectre Desktop again, and I'm going to tell it we're ready to scan our signed transaction. Pulls up the camera. There we go. And I'm going to show it to it. Let's see. Oh, I got to webcams hate high contrast, so I got to dim my screen. OK. And there's, go on, baby. There we go. Oh, we're so close. Hey, last hurdle has been crossed. <laughs> they're, they're applauding because our project does what it's supposed to do. <laughs> right. Basic functionality. <laughs> uh, and then we can send the transaction. So we've signed a multi-sig transaction, completely air-gapped, only using QR codes back and forth. The secret has only been on the seed signer. If we pull the power, the seed signer is wiped. And then the secret, at that point, only lives on this QR code, which I have to put back into safe storage. All right. <clears throat> Successful. So I figured, since we're on the open source stage, it'd be really cool to talk about how it's not just that Seed Signer is FOSS, free and open source software. It's that this project could not exist. It could not have gotten to this place without FOSS. So I'm sure there are plenty of non-programmers in the audience. But if you're just a little bit Bitcoin savvy, you might recognize BIP32, BIP39, a PSBT script, uh, descriptors. All this functionality, we did not write. It, we're importing from this Mbit library. So somebody else did the most difficult, most important work for dealing with Bitcoin. <clears throat> that person is Stepan. So when he says quantum physicist, Bitcoin hacker, he's not joking. <laughs> like, his training and professional experience is literally a quantum physicist, OK? That's the guy that you want writing your core Bitcoin libraries, right? So when, like, we're, not, we're standing on the shoulders of a quantum physicist giant uh, to, to power this, this device. And of course, his library is MIT Open License, FOSS. Uh, first code review, right? Public code. Uh, Michael Flaxman, uh, I looked at the Seed Center code, and it makes me uncomfortable. This file being 3,000 lines of code and littered with globals is a hard pass. Bad code in 2021. 
Uh, seed Signer admits that at, you know he's not a, a, a high-level professional coder. He just hacked it together to uh, get the proof of concept working. Um, and so his response, I'm still very new to coding. Why is a 3,000 line single Python file bad? And why are, why are globals bad? All right, there's a lot to learn. Um, and then this was Michael Flaxman last night. We asked him if we, had, we could get permission to show that screenshot. Uh, so he's, he's a good guy. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad he's a, pro, a fan of the project now. Uh, it was all deservedly true. <clears throat> So first open source collaborator. So Nick, so he's, he's the, the, the third leg of our, of our stool here. Um, he's got a full-time job. He's got a family, right? Nick is not available to hire as a developer for a project. So even if we had funding, we couldn't get Nick. Nick only works on this project because he thinks it's cool. He thinks it's fun. Like he loves doing it. He loves Bitcoin, right? He's a volunteer. Um, and so he was the first major contributor that looked at the code, agreed that it was garbage, and said, hey, you know what, I can help improve it. Uh, and he did. So by May of 2021, the code was totally uh, revised by, by Nick's contribution. And then thanks to Rootsoul and Odell, they invited SeedSigner to join them in the FOSS dome. Uh, this was the, you know, three conferences ago. And the only thing on my agenda at this conference was to check out the Seed Signer talk, because uh, I'd heard about it on Twitter, I was curious, and there were like 10 of us in this like swelteringly hot greenhouse effect dome where the AC was broken and it was terrible. Um, but it was great, I got to see him in person and, and kind of get a judge for his character and see if it was somebody that I wanted to you know, work with and, and contribute to his project. And I got other nudges. So I was working on changes to the Spectre desktop software, and Stepan is, runs that as well. And in the middle of that, my PR, he says, hey, by the way, we just added seed signer support. So that was another like, just endorsement of um, that this was a project worth paying attention to, and that it really caught my eye. So five days later, I built my first seed signer, and then within the first month and a half, I just started going crazy, building new features, trying to make improvements. Um, and I haven't stopped since. That was you know, almost two years ago. The UI. Uh, none of us are UI designers. So the first version looks like you know, a DOS prompt. Um, <laughs> and now this is the current version. Like, it's amazing. It's incredible. And it was by a professional designer. But again, He's got a full-time job. He's not for hire. He volunteered his time and his incredible gifts to do like the most professional, most beautiful UI UX work on a volunteer basis for Seed Signer. And uh, something I just learned yesterday, he was in the FOSS dome with us. He was one of the 10 people sweating, um, sweating his something off. Uh, um, along with us. And I, I've never met him in person. I'm like, holy crap, I was probably standing right next to the guy. And he's been one of the most important contributors to this project. It's incredible. And, and he's an Anon. He's not actually Bill Murray, okay? <laughs> um, and then just people that got so excited about it, they just started 3D printing and designing their own enclosures, and then they open sourced those enclosures. And they've iterated upon the designs and shared designs and improved upon each other's. And then, you know, Seed Signer has incorporated those designs into his. And so it's just this evolution on top of evolution. Uh, and then we've just gotten so much love from the Bitcoin community. Uh, BTC Sessions, uh, I, I said that, you know, he's a great example of how somebody can be incredibly valuable to FOSS without even being a developer. Uh, the, the, the podcasters that have had Seed Signer on, you know, very early and just promoting the project, giving him a platform to talk about it. Uh, Econo Alchemist wrote like a billion word uh, write-up on how to use a Seed Signer in uh, Bitcoin Magazine. <clears throat> and then we get invited to talk at like all these awesome conferences and we get to travel the world when we can afford it uh, and, and share, uh, share this project with people. 
we did hands-on workshops in El Salvador, and I got to use my high school Spanish to like just barely get through them. It was incredible. It was incredible. Um, and then it's a volunteer project. We're not doing this to get you know rich. That ain't gonna happen. Um, but we have gotten funding, so HRF has been huge. Coin ATM Radar came out of nowhere and was a huge supporter for us. And so I was able to get full-time funding for five months out of the last two years. Like, it doesn't sound like much, but oh my God, I can do so much when I don't have to worry about billing my fiat contract hours. Uh, and then, again, it's FOSS, right? So we're just trying to attract more eyeballs, more talent, more contributors. We got new developers coming in, and we've got people who are now experts in how to use a seed signer. And so in the Telegram group, they can answer most people's problems so that we don't have to get involved. So like, it just frees up our time and, and our energy. Uh, and <laughs> I, I, I love our seed signer maxis on Twitter. Like anytime there's a thread about hardware wallets or anything else, I kind of scroll through like hoping seed signer will get a mention. And, and one of our uh, reply guys is, is jumping in and uh, uh, saying, like, what about Seed Signer? Like, oh, Seed Signer can do this. Uh, I love it. Uh, the Bitcoin product community, it's a new, fairly new effort uh, to get volunteer project managers to work on FOSS projects. And so we've picked up an awesome volunteer PM, uh, and he's just doing great work. Uh, you can see, like, our, our GitHub issues are getting organized and prioritized by him. Uh, and then, again, because it's FOSS, we contribute back. So when we need improvements or changes in Mbit or other libraries, rather than implementing it just in our code base, we do the pull request back into those projects that we're using. Um, and this is just, see, this, this uh, seed QR format, uh, this is like my, my very simple solution to, to load your seed into the seed center as quickly as possible. Um, it's a very simple thing, but it's kind of like my tech baby, and it's just so cool to see this thing being adopted by uh, other, other projects, other hardware wallets. Foundation Devices is calling this, uh, you know, becoming an industry standard. Uh, the Blockstream Jade has been transformed uh, by adopting seed QR and changing how people can use it and interact with it. Uh, and so now, a growing list of software wallets and hardware wallets have integrated the format. So anybody who has their seed stored on a seed QR doesn't have to worry. If we disappear, if their seed signer breaks, now there's all these other options that can still read the exact same data. It's really cool. And, it, and again, it's so FOSS, right? Like, it's not a proprietary standard. Nobody's paying me licensing fees, you know, because we invented this. It's just we published the spec, people decided if they wanted to adopt it or not. And some have. Some have. I think it's coming. Um, we've also inspired some like side projects. And if you look at the picture, they're actually using the Seed Center hardware, but with a different operating system to drive their uh, seed hammer device, which drills seed QRs and mnemonic backups into steel. Like, holy cow. Uh, and we actually, we met them in El Salvador and we were talking about uh, like this sort of tech solution for like two hours over margaritas at the uh, Adopting Bitcoin conference. Like, amazing. Uh, and actually, I'll let, I'll let Seedsigner jump in here because uh, this, is, this is his baby, the, the stateless uh, train. Right, the, the stateless approach to managing a private key on a device, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not something that we were the first to do. But what I like to think our contribution to the larger uh, Bitcoin cold storage space was to provide a very enthusiastic, active test bed of users who were willing to experiment with this workflow and figure out, is this compelling? Is this something that people are going to do? Are people going to want to load, have to load their seed onto the device every single time they power it on? And then, like, it changes up how you think about it. A lot of people look at their hardware wallet and think that's where their Bitcoin is. And... Our kind of workflow helps educate users about, you know, you, your Bitcoin don't live on your hardware wallet. Your hardware wallet just contains a copy of your private key that you use to access your Bitcoin on the larger Bitcoin blockchain. 
Um, but our effort to kind of pioneer and explore these alternative workflows is starting to show some fruit in terms of other um, hardware wallet manufacturers adding uh, ephemerality or statelessness as a feature, as a part of their offering in their feature set. And I, I just wrote up this user story kind of quickly. You can read it yourself. But um, I love that our project has helped a lot of people who have wanted. I, I get DMs from people who say that Seed Center was the thing that pushed them over the edge. All of their funds were on Coinbase or some other custodial platform. And Seed Center was the thing that pushed them over the edge to get into cold storage. Or they were curious about multi-sig wallets. And like me, they're a cheapskate. They didn't want to have to buy five treasures to be able to start playing around with multi-sig. So with that one seed signer, you can very quickly set up a multi-sig and just start figuring out, like, how accessible is this? Is this the, the solution to me? So I'm super proud of our project as having been the avenue to cold storage for a lot of people, because that's, that's an important part of Bitcoin. A major feature is that we can all hold our money. So making it easier and more accessible to people is a big goal of our project. And we're coming up on time here. Um, I'm a child of the 90s, so forgive the dated reference, but in the 90s, a lot of the bands you've heard of listened to this tiny band called the Pixies, and the Pixies uh, were very uh, innovative in terms of their musical style, did a lot of unconventional things in their songwriting, and it, it wasn't exactly accessible to a mainstream audience, but a lot of other bands that achieved a lot greater popularity in terms of uh, exposure and significance we're really into the Pixies. So I don't know what the future holds for Seed Signer. Um, the, I, I think that DIY build your own signing device has caught on probably even more than I expect it to. And, and all signs point that it will continue to grow. But even if Seed Signer doesn't get to mass adoption, um, I, I'm really proud that we were able to pioneer some of these ideas that have been influential within the cold storage space. And kind of that's what anyone wants to do is, with, you know, with my background, retired cop doing digital forensics. What am I going to be able to contribute to the Bitcoin space? I, I don't want to do chain analysis. I don't want to be the guy trying to figure out how to break into your hardware wallet. Um, so what can I do to help move Bitcoin forward? And Seed Signer was the embodiment of me figuring out, like, wh what, is, what is the verse that I can contribute to the great song that is Bitcoin? How can we use our unique skills to move the ball forward for this thing that we all uh, totally believe in? So. Two minutes under. Do you have anything so, else you want to say? Uh, we, we don't really have time for Q&A, but we've got all these awesome tables out there. Um, we got to go run to the Bitcoin games and watch the, 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 the speed signer challenge where people have to assemble a seed signer, make a key, and make their seed QR. So we got to go observe that. But once that's over, um, I'll at least be back up here. And so if you have questions or you want to see a, a, a live demo that will be uh, easier to pull off, um, just come find me. I'll be hanging out up here uh, the whole afternoon. Cool. Thank you, Miami, for the last three years in this amazing city. The whole world shut down, but Miami welcomed us with open arms. We want to show Bitcoin to the whole world. We are taking the conference on the road to set the stage for Bitcoin in a new city. Nashville. Bitcoin 2024 is coming to Nashville in Tennessee. A city that is known as a music and freedom city. Bitcoin 2024 in Nashville from July 25th to 27th.